you can see the lecture. Yes, perfectly. The first slide. Yes. Yes, okay. sure. Good morning to everyone. I am especially grateful for the invitation to Alvaro Campero, Luis Arin Castro, Jose Soriano, and Luis Warba. Um, we wish that uh, all this lecture of this morning may help to a high number of neurosurgeons around the world to make their surgeries more efficient and safe. So welcome to all of you again, and uh, we hope you enjoy every single minute during the vir this virtual theoretical lectures. The study of the relationship of the brain gyrus and sulcus with the cranial surface has allowed the creation of a topographic guide for neurosurgeons. Uh, Professor Rivas uh, did an interesting study about it. And uh, our team believes that uh, future trends will be based on related, relating white matter tracts with craniometric points and cranial windows, which will be very, very useful for glioma and epilepsy surgery, for example. The improvement of microsurgical anatomy, preoperative studies and intraoperative visualization together will, uh, with the refinement of uh, instrumentation, allow the evolution of microneurosurgical technique safe and total uh, glioma uh, re re remotion of metastatic lesion without loss of neurosurgical function is a challenge. Basic glioma uh, sur surgical strategies need to be based on a deep and precise uh, knowledge of the cortical brain anatomy and deep uh, white, matter, white matter fibers. In this first lecture, we will try to describe the, the general architecture of the, of the cortical uh, structure of, of the brain. We need to remember that the cerebral cortex uh, is located one third over the gyral cortex. And we don't uh, have to forget the cortex located on the deep uh, surface of the sulcus of the lateral, basal, and medial surface of the brain. 20% of this cortical uh, anatomy that we will describe now is uh, eloquent cortical surface and 80% is no, non-eloquent surface uh, or association cortical areas. An interesting book that I strongly su suggest to the residents uh, of neurosurgery and you're imagining too, uh, is this one, uh, The Atlas of Cerebral Sulci, uh, written by Michio Ono, is for me one of the best book for studying the, the, the cortical uh, structure of, of, of the brain. We publicate uh, an, a paper with our team in the University of Buenos Aires uh, that the name is Hidden Anatomy of Intrasulcus Cerebral Cortex. This paper was publicated two years ago uh, in our Argentinian uh, Anatomy Journal. And I strongly suggest uh, this paper if some Spanish uh, speakers uh, want to, to read. Every time we describe the anatomy of the sulcus and, uh, and the gyrus, but sometimes we forget this cortical surface located on the deep, uh, on the deep region of, of, of the sulcus. If we split a simple sulcus, for example, the superior frontal sulcus, we will find intragyrus sulcus, uh, intragyrus, uh, intragyral cortex inside of the sulcus. And this is an, a, a forget uh, anatomy that uh, is interesting to keep in mind because if you, you need to reach a, a metastatic lesion, for example, or you need to operate a, gali a glioma or a cavernoma, you need some time to split um, some sulcus of the brain and you, you will find intra, uh, intragyral sulcus located in the surface of the brain. Uh, 
in this uh, lateral view of a left hemisphere, we can see that the, the gyrus of the brain is a continuous structure. For example, in this inferior frontal gyrus, we have here uh, the cortex that corresponds to the precentral gyrus that is continued with the uh, pars opercularis, and pars opercularis is continued with the pars triangularis, and here the we can see the continuous of the cortex with the pars orbitalis in the inferior frontal sulcus. This is why we need to study the cerebral architecture as a continuous uh, cortex between the lateral surface, the basal and medial surface, and not only by separate structures, the different sulcus and gyrus in the surface of the brain. In this coronal section with a mulligan technique that we made in the University of Buenos Aires, it's interesting to see that here in the lateral surface of the brain and in the basal surface, all the sulcus have a special direction <laughs> through the facing the, uh, the, um, the ventricular cavities. It is very important because if we need to reach the ventricular cavities, for example, the atrium or the temporal horn, sometimes we can use the natural corridors as this sulcus, for example, this superior temporal sulcus, this collateral sulcus to uh, reach the uh, ventricular cavities. When we, we need to describe the lateral surface of the brain, we, have, uh, we will have in all the hemisphere a constant, a constant fissure that the name is the lateral uh, fissure of the sylvian fissure. The sylvian fissure have, uh, is very important uh, to recognize because divides the temporal lobe inferiorly and superiorly it's located the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe. This structure have a sphenoidal segment. The sphenoidal segment have an a special direction from medially to laterally, and this segment have two uh, small sulcus, ascending branch and horizontal branch. That is very important more in, in the left hemisphere because it divides the inferior frontal gyrus in three different segments, pars orbitalis, pars triangularis, and pars opercularis. The posterior branch, at the end of the posterior branch, it divides in a terminal ascending and descending limb. This is one of the main structures that we need to recognize uh, when we describe the lateral surface of the brain. The direction of the sylvian fissure is horizontal and in the temporal lobe, we have the same uh, structure of the cortical surface because we have two horizontal uh, sulcus, the superior temporal sulcus, the inferior temporal sulcus. In the frontal lobe is exactly the same. We have the frontal, uh, the superior frontal sulcus, the inferior frontal sulcus here. And um, it is very important to keep in mind because when we, uh, when we find in the lateral surface of the brain with a sulcus with a different direction, an oblique direction, uh, we are describing the precentral sulcus, see? yes, that uh, it is the anterior margin of the precentral gyrus. We have here the diagonal sulcus, and it is very important to keep in mind that two small sulcus from the sylvian fissure, the anterior and posterior precentral, uh, subcentral sulcus that limits the inferior border of this uh, um, passage gyrus that connects the precentral gyrus and the postcentral gyrus. Professor Jasser Hill described on the lateral surface of the brain a, a different lobe. Um, uh, that is the central lobe. He described the precentral gyrus and postcentral gyrus as an individual lobe due the importance uh, with its functional anatomy. We know that the, in the precentral gyrus, uh, 
and the, uh, it's located the motor primary cortex and in the postcentral gyrus is located the motor the sensitive primary cortex okay here in this left hemisphere with this we can uh, see exactly the exactly the same the sylvian fissure with its posterior prolongation and the ascending and horizontal branch dividing the inferior frontal gyrus in three different portions Another sulcus on the lateral surface of the brain that we need, we need to uh, to recognize is this one with a um, with a vertical and oblique direction. That is the central sulcus. Anteriorly and posteriorly, we have the development of the cortical architecture of the central lobe that uh, Professor Jasser Hill described as an individual lobe. Where and this uh, the importance of the of this cerebral cortex, the, limited by the precentral and posterior uh, central uh, sulcus. We have here in green the superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus. Sometimes um, we can find between this sulcus and intermediate sulcus that divides this gyrus in two segments, in two different segments. These two sulcus divide the frontal lobe in front, superior frontal gyrus, inferior uh, medial frontal gyrus, and inferior frontal gyrus. The most complex of these three gyrus is the inferior frontal gyrus and is eloquent in, in, in the posterior segment in the left hemisphere because the Broca's area is located in the posterior part of the triangular, um, the pars triangularis, sorry, and the anterior segment of the parts opercularis. Here in the temporal lobe, we can find the superior temporal gyrus and, uh, sorry, su uh, inferior, superior temporal sulcus and inferior temporal sulcus. Generally, the inferior temporal sulcus is not a continuous sulcus, it's interrupted. It's very frequently to find it interrupted but not with the superior temporal sulcus. The, we can uh, find posterior to the, posterior to the uh, uh, post-central uh, post sulcus, another sulcus that is located into the parietal lobe with an anterior posterior, uh, anterior -posterior direction, that is, the, that is the intraparietal sulcus that ends at the posterior central sulcus. This sulcus is very important uh, because it is a deep sulcus that uh, in, 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 the, in the deep of this sulcus, we can reach the, the, the atrium. It's a very uh, neuroanatomical landmark for reach the atrium and divides the parietal lobe in the superior parietal lobe and inferior parietal lobe. The inferior parietal lobe is, uh, is composed by two different gyrus that involve like a cup at the posterior end of the sylvian fissure and the posterior end of the superior temporal gyro. Okay, this is the, 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 the inferior parietal lobe. The supramarginal gyrus and the triangular gyrus. <clears throat> Between these two small gyrus, there is a small sulcus that the name is intermediate sulcus or sulcus of Jensen. We can divide the, the occipital lobe to the parietal and temporal lobe by an imaginary line if we cross the point between the parieto, uh, parieto temporal, parieto occipital sulcus and the uh, uh, preoccipital notch. Okay, and the occipital lobe is not a, a constant uh, structure that we can describe, but uh, in, in the majority of the brains, we can describe an inferior occipital gyrus that is continued with the inferior temporal gyrus, and a medial occipital gyrus as, and a superior with a vertical direction, superior occipital gyrus. Okay, 
In this left hemisphere, we can describe the, the, bro the, the Broadman area, 44 and 45. <clears throat> um, it's very important because it's the broadcast area. And this area uh, are represented in the anterior segment of the pars opercularis and posterior segment of the pars triangularis. It's very important because it's eloquence. And of course, in the precentral gyrus, the area, the four area of Broadman or mot, uh, primary uh, motor cortex, okay? In front of this one, we have the, 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 the sixth area of Broman, that is the supplementary uh, motor area. As we can, we can see in these beautiful sculptures uh, from a beautiful museum from Me Mexico, from Mexico City, uh, where it's represented the different segment of the of the um, of the of the body, uh, if we can put the portions uh, which our brain represents in the extension of our cortex. In this lateral view of this uh, left hemisphere, we can see the uh, the market in red, the, the area one, two, and three of Broman representing the primary sensitive uh, area of the lateral surface of the brain. Splitting the lateral fissure we can observe a deep area located uh, um, in, in the deep uh, sylvian fissure that is the insular lobe. The insular lobe is a complex start, uh, structure, is the external, uh, the external capsule of the central core of the brain and uh, it's covered one, the, the inferior portion by the temporal lobe and the two third portions uh, through the uh, frontal and parietal lobe, okay? And this segment of the temporal, parietal and frontal lobe is, are called uh, operculums. Okay, the insula is limited by the uh, limited, sul limited sulcus of the insula that we have an anterior portion, superior portion and inferior portion, okay? It, uh, starting with, uh, from the apex of the insula, we can find three or four short gyrus, and uh, in the posterior portion of the insula, generally we can uh, see, we can observe two long gyrus. And between this one, we have the central sulcus of the insula that correspond to the central sulcus of the lateral surface of the brain an important sulcus that we can find uh, splitting the, the sylvian fissure is this anterior temporal transverse gyrus uh, that correspond to the area 41 and 42 of the Broadman and uh, is, the name is the, the gyrus of, uh, of uh, Hesher. Okay, it's important to know that um, the in, 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 the, in the frontal and parietal uh, operculum, we have the subtriangular uh, gyrus, the subopercular gyrus, the supracentral, sub, sub, uh, subcentral gyrus, and anterior, medial, and posterior parietal gyrus that correspond, uh, that are facing the anterior, medial, and posterior temporal transverse gyrus uh, of the superior surface of the temporal lobe. Okay. Facing this beautiful dissection from the superior surface of the brain, we can observe that the insula is covering the central core of the brain. This is another chapter, and Professor Riva will speak about it uh, some 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 uh, hours uh, in some hours. Uh, but the insula is covering the central core, and we have an anterior portion of the insula that covered from the foramen of Monroe uh, behind and um, posteriorly to the foramen de Monroe, the posterior part of the insula are, is covering this segment, okay? With the head of the caudal nucleus and here the, the, the thalamus. Facing the superior uh, surface of the brain, we can observe that the direction of the sulcus of the frontal lobe in this part are anterior, anterior posterior and in this segment, corresponding to the central lobe of the brain, the direction is oblique. 
Here we can observe the central sulcus of the brain forming a special feature that uh, is very important for neuro, neuro radiologists. Uh, this uh, this uh, sh special shape that uh, the central sulcus uh, can be seen here in the MRI. And here we can observe the central sulcus introducing into the sylvian fissure and forming the paracentral lobule in the uh, medial surface of the brain. As we can see here, not everything is so, uh, so simple. Sometimes we can find this kind of hemisphere with uh, some malformation. For example, in this one, we can't see the central sulcus. Here we can observe a, a polymacrogyry, okay? And there is uh, no a, a good configuration of the sulcus of the frontal lobe. For example, here we have vertical sulcus in the frontal uh, lobe. Remember, anatomy is not mathematic, okay? And there is a lot of uh, variability here in the anatomy of the brain, uh, not only in the vascular anatomy, in the cortex architecture of the brain, we can find some variabilities. Facing this um, sagittal section of, uh, of, of the head, we can observe the medial surface of the brain that is covered uh, almost totally by the, 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 cerebral, the cerebral septum, okay? And uh, only the anterior portion, uh, the medial, uh, an anterior portion of the cingulate uh, gyrus is uh, free facing uh, with each other in the, in, the, in the deep of the sylvian fissure. Describing the medial surface of the brain, we, the, the first structure that we need to keep in mind is a, is a commissural uh, important structure. This is a, the, the, the corpus callosum. Over the corpus callosum, we, we can find the sulcus callosum, and uh, we can find um, covering with the C shape, the, the corpus callosum, the gyrus of the cingulum, limiting the, the superior surface of the, the gyrus of the cingulum. We can find the sulcus of the cingulum, and in the third arch, um, over the, the, the sulcus of the cingulum, we can find different structures um, forming a three C jape structures. And here, representing uh, with two lines in, in yellow, uh, are demarcated the two rostral sulcus, superior and inferior rostral sulcus on the medial surface of the brain. It's important to um, recognize this constant sulcus that is the temporoparietal sulcus. And here we can find the calcarine sulcus. The point of junction between these two sulcus divides the calcarine sulcus in an anterior calcarine uh, sulcus that is covered by non-eloquent areas and the posterior, elo uh, posterior calcarine sulcus that is covered by uh, um, by eloquent area, of course, the visual cortex. Here we can observe the corpus callosum, the cingulum, the cingulum at the point located behind the, the splenium of the corpus callosum are, have a, a small notch that corresponds to the ismut or ismut of, of the cingulum and in this point, this, the cortex of the, the cingulum is continued with the parahippocampal gyro, forming the limbic lobe of Broca, okay? That have, of course, a, a C shape. <clears throat> the third arc that we can find in the, in the medial surface of the brain is uh, the medial surface of the frontal gyrus of the, of the superior frontal gyrus, sorry. Some author described this surface of the, of, of the brain, this, this cortex as medial frontal uh, gyrus, but it's not correct. It's the medial surface of the superior frontal gyrus. The, the, the cingulate sulcus have uh, two, two branches that um, correspond anteriorly 
to the paracentral branch and posterior the ascending or, or marginal branch. Between these two, um, two small branches of the cingulate uh, sulcus are the lima is limited uh, the, um, the paracentral lobe that correspond to the areas of the motor cortex and sensitive cortex of the uh, inferior um, part of, of, the, of the leg, uh, uh, of the contralateral side, of course. And in the middle, we can observe the central sulcus projected over the uh, medial surface of the brain. Posteriorly to the paracentral lobe, we can find the, the precunius, that is the medial surface of the superior parietal lobule. And posteriorly, between the parieto-occipital sulcus and calcarin sulcus, we can observe the cuneus, uh, the cuneus lobe. Of course, superiorly and inferiorly to the calcarin sulcus, we can find the 17, 18, and 19 areas of Rodman corresponding to the visual cortex uh, located over the uh, medial surface of the of the brain. Okay, continuing with the uh, cingulate gyrus, um, we can find this, this gyrus that this correspond to the um, uh, parahippocampal gyrus that have a small, uh, small lip that correspond to the uncus of the parahippocampal in green uh, colored here. When we describe the inferior surface of the brain, we can find the sphenoidal segment of the, of the sylvian fissure that divide the, the basal surface of the brain in an anterior or frontoorbital surface and a posterior or temporal occipital surface of the brain. This basal surface is easy and not so complex to understand. Here we can observe the olfactory, the olfactory nerve. Medially to the olfactory nerve, we have the, the gyrus rectus, okay? And uh, we can observe in this fresh specimen a cruciform sulcus that have a form uh, like an H with a la medial and lateral, and lateral uh, um, anterior posterior sulcus and one transverse sulcus that divide the frontoorbital surface of the, of the basal brain in four portions. In green, the medial orbital gyrus, in red, the posterior orbital gyrus, here uh, in black, the anterior front, uh, orbital gyrus, and in yellow, the lateral orbital gyrus that is continued with the pars orbitalis of the inferior frontal gyrus that we described on, over the lateral surface. In the parieto, sorry, in the temporoccipital surface of the basal um, brain, we can observe the occipitotemporal sulcus, the collateral sulcus that the collateral sulcus divides the uh, parahippocampal gyrus to the fusiform gyrus here. Yes, and the occipitotemporal sulcus is interposed between the fusiform gyrus and the inferior temporal gyrus laterally. The renal sulcus is very important that divide the parahippocampal gyrus to the temporal pole. And here we can observe on a small gyrus that is generally the cortex of this gyrus, that is the, the lingual gyrus, is continued with the parieto, the, the parahippocampal gyrus. Okay, in this uh, coronal section, we can observe the inferior temporal sulcus, the occipitotemporal sulcus and the collateral sulcus facing all of them to the temporal horn of the ventricle. Here exactly the same, in yellow, the parahippocampal gyrus, the 
<clears throat> lingual gyrus that's continuous, the cortex with the parahippocampal. It's very interesting, this feature. And here in yellow, the parieto temporal gyrus in the inferior surface of the brain. Okay, this, um, this special sector that Dr. Wen will speak sure uh, some, some minutes, uh, in some minutes, have a lot of structure that correspond to the uncus of the parahippocampal gyrus. The parahippocampal gyrus have a, a, an apex and an, that divides the, an anterior portion that corresponds to the amygdala and a posterior portion that corresponds to the head of the hippocampal formation uh, inside of the lateral ventricle in the temporal horn. Finally, Paraphrasing Bill Roth, uh, for anyone who has anatomy in mind and has taken benefit of the time in the courses of uh, operation recently, the ligature of an artery is a small thing, anatomy of the security of our knowledge in this science will depend in many cases, the life of a man. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Machías. Fue una excelente presentación.